G'day, it's Robbie Regain. Well, that last video I, I did where we looked at dog test indicators and shows you how they're great, indispensable for setting up four jaw chucks, primarily because they can do the internal measurements that a dial indicator can't do uh, on small stuff. At the time, I did mention that if you can afford it, and you should be able to afford it if you buy the cheap stuff, get one of each because these are the normal dial indicators are what you would use for measuring absolute measurements like travel you know carriage travel and things like that and I've had a few people get back to me and say oh yeah you know you should you know you should use uh, both and there's a place for both and it's true there is but that wasn't what the video was about the video was really about trying to get through the newbies that don't be afraid of a dial test indicator because it looks like, you know, some high-tech bit of wizardry. It is very simple to use and it's perfect for forge jaw work. Now, if you've got a, a normal dial indicator, they're great for, for measuring carriage travel and I can mount mine onto the carriage stops. I've got one at e each side of the carriage. I can also use a magnetic one which sits onto the... Um, the ways and you can measure carriage travel and it's great for milling particularly you know so yeah they're good for those sort of jobs now if you've got a dial indicator like this and you want to use it for measuring carriage travel and you don't have uh, carriage stops which a lot of people don't have although I find them extremely useful you can easily make up a magnetic base to go on the back of of these of these dials, you know, these indicators. <laughs> it's not a lot of work. And I mean, I've got a magnetic one that I made up, a digital one I made up years ago, and I'll show you that too later in the video. But for today's exercise, I'll knock up a magnetic base for this to sit on, where it will allow it to be used for, for carriage travel, and you can see how I do it. And it's piss easy. And you don't have to spend any money at all, really. All you need is a bit of scrap and an old rare earth magnet, and you're good to go. So let's get into it. Bloody doves, I'll shoot those bastards one day. Horny little bastards.
Oh, that thing's finally shut up. Must have worn its bloody voice out. I think it's got an egg there and it's telling everybody about it. Don't know what's out there. Old crows will be along and they'll snaffle those young ones. It's a free lunch when they're around. Goodbye, dove. <laughs> Okay, we're nearly there. Now we just got to put a tapered head bolt in there. Um, that one's imperial. Uh, it doesn't matter. Just use the torque screw on it. And this one will have to be imperial too because I'm pretty sure that's all I've got in tapered heads. But that's okay, once, once she's on, she's staying on, I've locked tied it on there and I'll probably just leave it all together, you know, as it is, it's pretty useful that way. Anyway, I can easily, easily pull it apart. And of course it will take a, just a regular um, clock, you know, no problem, same thing, just goes on and she just sit on there. So, yeah, it's going to be, it's handy. And so it's dragging out, trying to use the the big mount uh, piece of cake and make this, you know, in an hour or so, I suppose. Simple project. Okay, this is where you want to drill a piece of the rugby table and a rack, if possible. Always paint your work down, otherwise you run the risk of ripping your fingers to pieces. I like to have a drill device, you know, ordinary device, that way you can slide it around. And this has got plain jaws, and this has got marked jaws, so if I want to use the plain jaws, I just take that one out and away I go. And also I use that for milling on the lathe as well, so you can double up on all this stuff. And I use that in the band saw at times to hold difficult work. When you drill this stuff, slow speed. High speed is the soft stuff. The drill's got most chance of breaking as it breaks out of the work. The very last part of the job you should just take it easy. Because if you're going to break a drill, nine times out of ten, that's where it's going to happen. Plug tap, I'll try that, it might be a bit sharper. Oh, I doubt it. You never know. You never know. Ah, this is better. This is sharper. This shows you, even though an intermediate has got a leading edge, it depends how sharp it is, you see. That went through like a oh, hot knife through butter. No problem whatsoever. Okay, we're done. Just about. It's just medium strength Loctite, you can use whatever you want, it doesn't have to be stud lock. But, uh, anyway, this will do for now. Good enough, as the Pope said, or well, somebody said.
with these magnets, you never ever want to over tighten them because you can crack them. You never ever want to drill them, try and drill them because they will smash to pieces. And even a die grinder on them isn't a great idea. They can uh, fall to pieces on you. Yeah, looking good, eh? Not bad for a bit of junk. It'll be there. You can paint it if you want to. I, I personally wouldn't bother because it's going to be banging around on the lathe and cuttings and stuff. I just put a bit of oil on it and she'll be good to go. So that's it. It's basically done. Just a matter of whether you want to put one of these on or a, a digital one. A, um, an analogue one like that. It'll do both. We'll stick this on for now. So I'll be using this the most. Don't lock tight this, just stick it on. It should hold all right with a bit of pressure. Just make sure you've got it all lined up right. How's that grab you? Mm -hmm. Cool bananas. Let's try her out, eh? So she's really good. Of course it's going to be good. Came out of the Zindu workshop. And that's it. I mean, it's, it's basically a neat job. And you can see where I've left a gap. I've allowed for that rolled edge corner there. That's why it pulls up right onto that edge. You wouldn't want to bring it up against the base because it, it would then cant it. Um, so yeah, just be careful here, pull it up. On the analogue one that won't happen, they got a different mount altogether but it will still go on. Alright, let's try it. There you go, well it's good. I prefer the digital, they're better for this sort of work than a plot because you can set your zero point anywhere you like and then just work from that in either direction. If you use a normal analog uh, dial indicator, you're gonna have to crunch some numbers as far as your zero point goes, but uh, you can use either, that works good, no problem. And I mean, you know, how simple can you get it? <laughs> Pretty simple. The eye gauging is a really good little um, dial indicator. And uh, I love using it on this sort of work. But I have got another indicator which I made up ages ago. And there's a web page on it which I'll put a link to. And it's made out of a tyre... Uh, depth gauge for tread. It's digital and it works just like these, except that of course it's not a dedicated uh, indicator. It's meant for hand holding, but you can modify it. So I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, here it is. This is the one I made years ago. That's the same thing. And magnets just hold it onto the, the bed the ways, whatever, and you can um, take a reading through that, you can set your zero point either way, it can go positive or negative, the same as that eye gauging. The beauty of this is though, being very compact, you can mount it on your top slide very easily, and you can uh, take measurements there a lot more easily than you would do with one of these because these really are a bulkier unit. So yeah, this is a good little project once again. 
and uh, these are cheap to buy, I don't know, five bucks or something, but I don't know what they are now. I did this years ago, but they are quite a simple little gadget. Work well. So there you have it. If you want to uh, make up a, a magnetic mount, you couldn't get it much simpler than that, just a rare earth magnet, a bit of angle line, thick walled angle line, and a couple of screws. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. As for me, well, I think it's time for a beer rather than a piece of cake, so I'm going to have one. See you next time. Cheers.